As you are aware, the high-powered federal government delegation was in London the whole of this past week. The team comprises the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, SAN, the Minister of Information and Culture, that's my humble self, the Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin M. Fiele, the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Malawi Ibrahim Lamode, and the FCC chair, Acting Chairman, Ibrahim Magu, among others. The, seat, the team set off to achieve three main objectives, which even to the greatest optimist seemed an uphill task at that time. Our first objective was to change the narrative, especially on the international stage, on the entire PNID issue, more so in the run-up to the 26th September 2019 court hearing of the case. Second objective was to apply for leave of the commercial court to appeal the judgment that recognized the humongous and unprecedented arbitration award. And our final objective was to seek a stay of execution on the UK judgment that recognized the approximately $9.6 billion arbitration award to PNID over a botched 20-year gas deal with Nigeria. Gentlemen, without being immodest, I can say categorically that we achieved all three objectives. First, we took London by storm, taking our case to international media outlets and think tanks like AP, AFP, Reuters, Bloomberg, BBC, Financial Times, The Economist, The African Confidential, Royal African Society, and the Red Lion Chambers, which is the leading barrister's chambers in London, among others. We also met a group of experts and stakeholders. Our message was simple. The P&ID, a company without a physical address and no known investment anywhere in the world, set out to deep Nigeria from day one with the connivance of unpatriotic corrupt and greedy Nigerians. The entire gas supply processing agreement, which an ID entered into with the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, is nothing but a fraudulent contraption with no chance or expectation of success. We then said that the unprecedented $9.6 billion in arbitration award to be an ID constitutes an unreasonable reward to a company that has done nothing more than to engage in fraud and economic sabotage. This runs contrary to the cause of ju justice and is capable of bringing harm and hardship to Nigeria and indeed the wider region. Why do we say so? Because of the following. A. A contract of this magnitude cannot be valid until it, has been very, until it has been vetted by the Office of the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation and taken to the Federal Reserve Council for approval. None of this was done. The sham contract was also signed in contravention of the Bureau of Public Procurement Act and the Infrastructure Regulatory Commission Procurement Act. B. Why the MOU for the project was signed in 2009 by PNID Nigeria Limited and the Nigerian government, represented by the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, a trick clause dubiously dubi inserted in the MOU was curiously activated that allowed British Virgin Island registered PNID to replace the original contractual party 
PNID Nigeria Limited to sign the contract on January 11, 2010. PNID Incorporated in BVI, that's the British Virgin Island, is a shell company that has no history of any business except the Phantom Gas Supply Project process, process, process Agreement in Nigeria. Please note that there is no board resolution approving the assignment of the contractual interest to PNID BVI. C. PNID never started the construction of the project facility, despite its claim to have invested $40 million in Nigeria. It also never acquired any land to build the gas processing plant, talk less of bringing any equipment. D, there is no proof of any financial commitment by PNID towards the execution and implementation of its own obligation as stipulated in the 2010 agreement. Similarly, the Central Bank of Nigeria confirmed there, was, there is no trace of any funds brought into Nigeria by PNID. E, two directors of PNID Nigeria have been convicted of charges of money laundering and economic sabotage. They are Mohamed Kuchazi, a director of PNID BVI, and Adam Usman, a director of PNID Nigeria. F, suspicious move payments were made to Mrs. Grace Tiger, the legal director in the Ministry of Petroleum Resources. Mrs. Tiger was supposed to ensure that the interest of the country was adequately protected. Of course, the payment transferred in three tranches could only have been made in the appreciation of the good deed in court, done to be an ID by Mrs. Tiger. Also, billions of Naira in suspicious cash transfers were made by PNID. Investigations continue into these transfers. According to the contract, the gas for the project was expected to come from OML 67, operated by ExxonMobil, and OML 123, operated by Adax Oil. But none of the two companies were even aware of the agreement. H, and finally, for such a supposedly important project, there was no budgetary provision for the implementation of the GSPA in the budget of the Ministry of Petroleum Resources in 2010. And PNID did not obtain the necessary license to deal in petroleum products from the Department of Petroleum Resources as stipulated by extant laws. The firm also neither filed tax returns nor paid VAT to the Federal Inland Revenue Service as required by law. Our message reverberated around the whole world with over 150 articles published by major media outlets outside Nigeria within a week alone, according to the preliminary report of the top tier international coverage and went a long way in countering the distortion by PNID and changing the narrative on the whole issue globally. We also succeeded in our quest for a step execution, pending the determination of an application to the Court of Appeal in England. Our application for leave to appeal the judgment was successful, as I said earlier. Now let me go further to explain the judgment which was facilitated by the retained international legal firm of Curtis Male Provost, Colt and Mosley LLP, retained by the federal government in this case. Hey, the federal government now has an unconditional permission to appeal against the decision of the commercial court recognizing and converting the 9.6 billion US dollars arbitration award in favor of PNID to a domestic judgment. The Nigerian government won a leave of the commercial court 
to appeal the judgment which be an ID and vehemently resisted. The court granted the federal government unconditional permission to appeal against its own decision, and the court rejected PNID's argument that there was no basis for any appeal. On the contrary, the judge expressly recognized that the case was of major importance to the government and people of Nigeria, and that the federal government had a serious case of, as a serious case to present to the Court of Appeal that its decision was wrong. All but one of the six proposed group, group grounds of appeal by the Nigerian government were allowed by the commercial court. This is a huge success. The judge also granted the federal government a step of any enforcement proceedings pending the determination of any appeal. The judge accepted the federal government's evidence as to the weak financial status of PNID and the fact that it was nothing more than an offshore company with no established business, staff, or assets other than the arbitral award that it was trying to enforce, and that it would be unable to repay the proceeds of any enforcement because of appeal overturned his decision granting leave to enforce the award. The judge also recognized that the ownership of PNID was opaque and that a vulture fund stands behind it, which had engaged lawyers determined to pursue a strategy including the temporary seizure of assets regardless of state immunity claims. The federal government is pleased that the judge fairly recognized the merits of his arguments and the true nature of PNID and the strategy, and that he granted permission to appeal against his own decision and is still pending appeal. The federal government looks forward to its day in court, in the Court of Appeal, where it is confident that it will receive a fair hearing of his case and that the order permitting enforcement of the arbitral award will be set aside. What were the conditions imposed by the court for the state of execution? They include the following. One, the federal government shall pay the sum of 200 million US dollars into the court funds office, into the court funds office within 60 days of the date of this order. Secondly, the federal government shall make a payment of the sum of 250,000 pounds, representing P and ID's solicitor's advance costs within a period of 14 working days. Gentlemen, I have gone to the extra mile to summarize our week-long activities in London as well as the judgment of the London-based Commercial Court on the, on the arbitration award of 9.6 billion US dollars to pay an ID in order to put the record straight and knock the bottom of the argument of P and ID and its cohorts that we did not score a big victory in London last week. It was indeed a huge victory and P and ID has every reason to be worried that the 9.6 billion US dollars arbitration award awarded award to it has a good chance of being overturned. The federal government has a good chance of being successful in this impelling appeal. Otherwise, the commercial court would not have allowed the appeal in the first instance. Please note, gentlemen, that Nigeria will be able to demand for a refund of the 250,000 pounds payment to pay an ID where the government wins on the appeal. This fact is being hidden by those who have been spinning the London judgment in their own favor. On the 200 million US dollar payment, as a condition for the granting of the stay of execution, 
Nigeria has instructed its lawyers to seek the leave of the Court of Appeal to appeal against this payment. As I said in my press conference of Monday, 26 August 2019, Nigerians should remain assured that the federal government is taking all necessary steps to strongly avail itself of all defenses customarily afforded to sovereign states under the United Kingdom Sovereign Immunity Act to fight and obtain any enforcement of the award. In the words of Mr. President, at the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York last week, we are giving notice to international criminal groups by the vigorous prosecution of the PNI this scam attempting to cheat Nigeria of billions of dollars. End of quote. The federal government has succeeded in changing the false narrative being peddled by PNID, both within and outside Nigeria, by putting across strong evidence that the company is nothing but a fraud. Please permit me to thank the Nigerian media for its largely objective and patriotic reportage of this whole issue, despite the attempt by the desperate PNID to muddy the waters. Finally, and this is the most important point, for those who may still not understand the gravity of the judgment of the Commercial Court in London last week, let me say this. Had we lost our quest for a stay of execution and application to appeal in London last week, P and ID will by now be attempting to seize our assets all over the world. Remember they boasted before the judgment that they have started compiling a list of our assets which they will attach. But now that's an empty boast thanks to the successes recorded in the Court of Law and the Court of Public Opinion last week. I thank you, gentlemen, for your kind attention.